You've probably seen this meme floating around, and it's funny. Why? Because there's some truth to it. At one end, we just have MVC controllers. At the very opposite end, simply MVC controllers again. But there in the middle lies all the abstraction, library, tools, etc. The list goes on. So who's right? Well, like most things in software, it depends. But the answer, it depends, is ridiculous unless you say it depends on dot dot dot, which I'm going to do. I'm going to take a really simple example that has some abstractions in it, and I'm going to take that to something purely concrete. And along the way, I'm going to explain the trade-offs. This is less about being a dumb or smart developer. The middle necessarily isn't even bad. It's about design choices and trade-offs. This isn't to say that one is better than the other. It's to show that your decisions affect things like testing, extensibility, coupling, and as always, that context matters because context is king. I'm going to jump into my code example, but first I'd like to thank Current for sponsoring this video. Current's an event-native data platform that feeds real-time business-critical data with historical context in fine-grained streams from origination to destination, enhancing data analytics and AI outcomes. For more on Current, check out the link in the description. So here's a pretty simple example. We have an order controller, and what we're really going to look at and kind of rejig a little bit here is this my orders method, so this particular route. Right now, what it's doing is it's using Mediator to make a request to get my orders, and what it's doing is passing in the identity name of the user that's logged into the system. So what I can look at right now is here is the get my orders. This is actually the request for Mediator, and here is actually the handler for that request. So I'm just gonna explain what it's doing because we're gonna kind of dismantle a bunch of this. So first, it's injecting an iRead repository. It's using that by also specifying a specification. The specification is kind of basically adding some uh, where clause and other link kind of behavior to Entity Framework Core, our ORM that we're using. But that's kind of all backed by this repository. So we have the specification that's just basically doing our filtering. We're getting our list of orders out. And then we're kind of doing some transformation of that into this order view model. So that's what our handler is doing. So now I'm going to go backwards here up the call stack, um, see what this looked like again, is we're just making that call, again, using our identity name, passing it in. And then in this case, because it's actually MVC using HTML, not just returning JSON, we're actually using the built-in view uh, and passing along our view model. So we're just sending back out the HTML. So right now we're using MVC, Mediator, a specification, a repository, and Entity Framework Core. So let's start ripping this apart and replacing some of the abstractions with concrete implementations and then talk about the trade-offs. First one I'm gonna do is the specification and repository. So let's remove it. So basically what I'm gonna do is get rid of this entirely. And this is the catalog, if I could spell context. And let's get rid of this, get rid of this. We don't want that anymore. And we're just gonna use the DB context directly. And I'm just gonna replace this already with the actual request needed. So I'm just getting rid of the repository and specification. I'm just doing exactly the same thing. We end up with the exact same result here. What are the implications of doing so? So what's the value of that specification? What's its utility? And what did we lose by removing it? Well, its value and its purpose was to capture that precondition, that filtering of our username for when we're passing that to the repository. And it was also doing that uh, eager loading of the line items. So you don't accidentally forget to do that, I guess. So that's kind of what its purpose was. In this particular context, again, context is king, what was the total usages of it? One, one place. Is it worth do you have value in creating that indirection for one usage? In my opinion, absolutely not. But again, this is a sample to illustrate things. If you had this used in 20 different places, and you had to do that same precondition, that same filter, yes, it's worth capturing that explicitly and giving it a valuable name, something meaningful for that use case. With the repository, because it was using the specification, we kind of had to use both together. Otherwise, we'd be getting too much data, we'd be then filtering stuff in memory, that makes absolutely no sense. So they were kind of going hand in hand. Is there value in the specification and the repository? 
Absolutely. It depends on what you're capturing and the number of usages. Now you might be saying, I hate this. I don't like this at all. I want to abstract my use of my ORM because I may change that data access. I may change that ORM. Sure, whatever. Same question. How many usages do you have of the ORM for orders? Do you have a thousand or do you have 10? If you need to change 10, 10 usages of your ORM, is that valuable to have an abstraction? In my opinion, again, no, change your 10 usages. Do you have a thousand usages? Then maybe it's worth it. I'd also pose the question, why do you have a thousand usages? Could be entirely valid, but this all comes down to the degree of coupling in which you have. Also related to testing. You may say, okay, well, that repository and specification was easier to test than using my entity framework uh, directly here. True, maybe not. I don't necessarily agree that this is intestable. To me, it is as equally testable to fake out this particular data set just as it would be to fake out that repository. So the abstractions that you're creating or using, do they have value? Well, let's keep dismantling this example because it's gonna bring up another great point for a trade-off. So let's get rid of Mediator. Do we need it? What's the value? What are the trade-offs? Let's get rid of it. What I'm gonna actually do here is I'm gonna take all the contents of what the handler is and actually put it completely right in line here, view model, and it's gonna illustrate a couple things. So first I need to, from services, we're gonna add back in the catalog context as our DB context. We're gonna rename this. And immediately it's gonna point something else to us that we should notice. Now what we're doing is we are actually coupling, and a very important part here is we don't have the username. Where was the new username coming from? It was coming from MVC. This is a part of MVC. This type is only accessible in our controller. We were using that to pass into our, our actual requests, our query. Now we have to have it in line in our application code. So now we're kind of muddling the water there between application code and framework code and what we're bound to. MVC is about HTTP. We now have application code and our app is really a web app now. There was a difference from before to now. Before we kind of had an application request, now we really have a web request. That's what we're doing. Now we're coupling directly from MVC into our application code of what our application actually does. Does that matter? Does it matter that you're building simply a web app that's returning HTML or JSON, whatever? It's a web app. It's built on top of HTTP. There's no other entry points because that's what it is. Or do you need other entry points? What I mean by that is MVC could be one entry point, but you may have another. For example, if you're using something like a WebQ worker pattern and you're using a queue, that could mean that you have your MVC placing messages on a queue and separately you have a worker, which is another entry point, executing work, performing different tasks. This can be the exact same code base. They could be deployed as two individual units. They can be deployed together. It can be the exact same code base, the exact same deployment, but they're two different entry points. If that's the case, you don't want necessarily that application code directly in an MVC controller. So the problem here is you're coupling your application logic to your web framework, to ASP.NET Core MVC. Is that a problem? No, if all you ever need is HTTP and that's what you're building as a web app, that's totally cool. Could you still use something like Mediator in the case where you have multiple different routes that need to call the same type of commander query? Applicable use case. Controllers aren't the problem. Minimal APIs with CQRS, Auto Mapper, Mediator, Fast Endpoints, Vertical Slices, DDD, all this other stuff. None of that's the problem. What the problem is, is not understanding the tooling you're using in the given context and if it actually has value. So a few points to touch on is really what I'm trying to convey is that frameworks are entry points. They're not architecture. Your architecture is composed of many different architectural styles. Indirection adds flexibility, but it's also adding complexity. Direct coupling isn't inherently bad. You don't need an abstraction for everything unless it's limiting you. Use abstractions when they actually solve real problems, not just because everybody has to create an abstraction for everything. Design around your application's needs, not somebody else's patterns. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did and you wanna support my channel, you can join it by the link in the description on how to join. You get also access to a private Discord server where you can ask questions, answer questions about these types of topics around software architecture and design. 
Again, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.